Welcome back, I'm Rob Lang and this is my game Clomper. You live inside a mechanical ladybird called a Clomper, which you can control by laying pipes to power machines with steam. The outside world is a hellscape that you explore from inside the Clomper, picking up resources and completing quests. If that sounds like fun, like and subscribe for more. Since my last video, I've been chipping away at moving the Clomper netcode from Photon Pun 2 to Mirror. I'm not an expert in either, but a noob's perspective might be useful. If you want a really good tutorial series, then go and check out Dapper Dino, link in the description. To track an object in Mirror, it needs to have a network identity component. From there, you can inherit from a special class synchronize class variables and add extra components for tracking specific things such as game object transforms or animations. In a first person game a player must have a network identity and with that we come to our first restriction. In Mirror you cannot have a parent and child relationship between network identities. So where's that a problem? In picking things up. Seeing as the player has a network identity, if we have another tracked object here that we want to move about and pick up and drop, then it needs to have its own identity too. Mirror says we can't do that, even though it seems like a pretty standard thing to do in a game. So what solutions are there? The recommendation is to have two prefabs, one with network identity, one without. You then destroy recreate when a player picks something up. That seemed complicated and isn't going to scale well. Secondly, you could avoid using transform parent. Instead, set the world position and rotation of the object you're picking up in its update method. Not tried that one, but it should work. You could also ignore the restriction, do parenting anyway, but switch off any synchronization on the child that might cause conflict. And that's what I'm doing. It does seem to work. It's also what no means suggested. So if it all goes wrong, then I'm going to blame him. Because that's what friends do. If you want to send a message to the server, you must have authority over the object you're using. As Clomper isn't competitive, I can give client authority to the player. There's no advantage to the player's wall hacking in a co-op game. Especially this one. The way I tend to structure my code is that the interactivity is stored on the object. For example, if I turn the valve on the top of this pipe, it's the update method in this valve handle that watches for key presses. When I want to tell all the other clients that I've turned the handle, I cannot put a command method on the valve handle because the authority is with the server. I could take authority over the handle and hand it back when done, but that requires its own call to the server. So I'd have one call to take authority and another call to actually turn it. Instead, I have added a new component to the player called Network Actions. When a player interacts with something, you call a method on the player's Network Actions, which is marked as Command and Mirror will magically call that on the server. My network action commands remain really thin. All I use them for is taking and releasing authority or calling methods on the server or clients. This feels like a bad idea because with a network actions facade, I'm breaking the open close principle and that usually means that adding new features in the future is going to be more difficult. If you know of a better solution to these problems, please do let me know in the comments. Progress does feel slow, but I expected that and accept it. While learning a new framework, progress will crawl at first, but as you build knowledge, you will accelerate. I also have to deal with the echoes of old Photon network code, which I originally built the game on. That's not quick either. But I've decomposed my tasks into small chunks, I keep track of new issues as I find them, and I have a regression test list of all the parts of my game so I don't miss anything. So how far through am I? Using the power of pipes. If completion was joining the boiler up with the leg over there, the pipes represent tasks I've completed and the gap is what's left. So I'm about two thirds through. I've been YouTubing nearly a year now 
so I should really do something special for that. If you've got any ideas, post them in the comments. Although, I'm a bit nervous about asking you to do that. Perhaps I should do a face reveal. I could show you what's under the human one that I've been borrowing all this time. Give me a boost by tapping the like button. Get more life-affirming self-imposed hardship by hitting subscribe. And thank you for watching. Until next time, stay safe. Bye-bye.